Christmas. Hey, a little season change. I know. It looks almost like we have a fake backdrop. Oh, Christmas. Christmas. You like that? No. I thought you liked Christmas music. Not that kind of Christmas music? Apparently not. She doesn't support my dreams, you guys. What's up, everybody? We are back with another haul video. Um, mine is still going to be all Colorado. I know you are going to be showing stuff from where? Uh, from our friends Robin and Joe. So Dreamy Eye Joe. Dreamy Eye Joe uh, from Let's Shop, L E T T S Shop. Uh, I purchased a whole bunch of like bulk inventory from them, shipped it for me to me from Florida. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to show you what I got. All right, cool. I got some t-shirts from them too, uh, but that I'll, I'll show in a different haul, um, some of those. I still have stuff from Colorado, a lot of stuff from Colorado. I actually have a few things where I kind of uh, put it together by um, type, so I actually have a lot more than 10 items. Sorry. Um, also, I wanted to say, huh? We're gonna be here for a minute. No. Also, I just wanted to say, if you want to see more thrifting footage and stuff like that, Rally Roots put out a video yesterday. I'm gonna link it down below. Um, as if you need us to like send you to Rally Roots, but they did a video um, from our trip to Colorado and there's way more footage of us thrifting at bins at ARC thrift stores. Also, they have a lot more of the behind the scenes tour we got at the ARC warehouses. So you should definitely go check it out. Vicki and I are both in the video along with some of our other friends. We had fun. Um, we had a ton of fun, but you definitely want to check that video out. It's really fun. And it, he got, Ryan got way more uh, footage than I did, of course, because I guess I was too busy just hanging out. Well, and clearly Ryan is um, very good at being a digital creator. And That's you know. true. Although it's probably a little more motivating to put out a video when you know you're actually going to make more than $5 on it. <laughs> That's true. That's I'm true. just saying. But yes, Ryan is far better than we are. And of course, he taught me everything I know about vintage t-shirts. <laughs> So let's go ahead. And by the way, I did take your advice when you asked me last time why I wasn't keeping this t-shirt. Um, I still have it up for sale, but uh, you were right. It is. Um, it's a you shirt. It's a me shirt. And, it, and it's just the right size for me. So I am wearing it today. I love it. Um, why don't we go ahead? You start. What do you got? All right. So not everything is like super banger, right? But there are it's all bangers. some really, really good things and I'm gonna explain why I purchased them. So the way it worked is I paid on average uh, $4 an item, except for the last item I paid a little bit more for. I think I paid 10 or $15 and then I paid shipping. So it worked out to be probably like six to $7 an item because they live in Florida and it was a pretty heavy box. So I, you know, that's a little bit more than I generally pay, but I was able to like cherry pick what I wanted, you know? So True. there's that. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to show is just this funky, um, like, blouse. It's, there's not even a real name on it. I think it just says Visco Size Free. Like, I don't know. There's probably a tag on it at some point. But I just really liked it because it has all these great loud patterns and colors on it. Like, this is super funky. Uh, this looks like something our friend Michelle would wear. Um... And it's just, I like it. It's a blouse. It's probably like a women's size large. I know they say free size, but what does that really, even mean? That's not really a free size. Uh, but I would say women's size large. I did wash it because it was um, a little musty smelling. I know that some of the stuff that they got came from a storage locker that had a little bit of mustiness going on. Um, and it's like a cotton. It's not rayon or anything. It's, it's cotton? I think it's a cotton or a cotton blend. Huh. It may be some rayon, but I don't really even know, to be honest with you. Uh, it's just cool. So you want me to use my young eyes to tell you what yeah, the tag says? Yeah, I can't tell what the tag says. <laughs> anyway, I'll probably list it for like sixty, seventy-five dollars, and hope to get anything over like forty-five or fifty. It's it's just a really cool pattern, and it's really going to be all about how you describe it and how it looks photographed on the mannequin. Yeah, for sure. All right, first up, uh, you know it was really fun. We talked about this before, thrifting with a bunch of friends and people throw you stuff. This is actually something. Um, I got it at the bins. Ryan actually found it and he gave it to me. Uh, let me tell you, it was actually filthy. So this is a vintage Nike, 90s Nike pullover hoodie. Um, and it was like filthy, but it was like dirt. It was literally like somebody who like rode a dirt bike in it, like the back had like a bunch of dirt. So I was like, I'm pretty sure all of that will wash out and be fine. So it's actually, it came completely clean and it's nice and faded um, and it's a good size. It's like an extra large. And so I put this up, I mean, I probably put it up for 70 or something like that, but I should be able to get at least $50 for it. 
Um, but I got it at the bin, so I paid maybe a couple bucks. And remember, everything I got from Colorado, my average uh, cost was $7. Some stuff, obviously, I got at the bins might be less than a dollar. Some stuff I paid up for, but the average was 7 bucks. So I should be able to get 50 for that. Very cool. Uh, okay, this also came from Robin and Joe. All the things that I'm going to show today did. This is uh, vintage. I would have, I would call this late 70s to early 80s. I have not looked it up. I could be wrong. It could just be a funky-looking tag that makes me think more vintage. But I think it is. It's a vintage knit. It's almost like a rugby shirt. It's definitely rugby style with the stripes, but it has a polo button at the top and it's knit. It's thick. It's like a sweater. Yeah. It's not a, um, it almost reminds me of like, well, and also the style of like wear buttons is like kind of like a rugby shirt. You have to do that. How it kind yeah. Of so, I mean, I'll probably use rugby, knit rugby shirt, sweater, yeah. all those things in the title. It's a good size too. It's like, it's a men's. And I would call this a large all day. Uh, and it's long. So I don't know. I mean, it's pretty cool. I don't know what I'm going to list it for. It may be a brand that is highly desirable and I just don't know it. Uh, but if it's the brand is irrelevant, probably like 60 to $70 range. This is like if you're really like a rugby fan, a rugby player, but you want to dress nice for Christmas because you're going to see your mom, <laughs> you wear your rugby sweater. You're a dork. All right, next up, uh, I don't know if you've, any of you guys remember um, the t-shirt that Liz had found for me and sent to me that I wear all the time. It's the Colorado, it's like Coffin Races coffin t-shirt. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just super cool black t-shirt. Well, I found, or I got this shirt from Alex, the guy that we did the, the bulk buys from, the private buys from. And uh, this is actually from the same event. This is Frozen Dead Guy Days in Nederland, Colorado. I don't, even know I don't know. Frozen Dead Guy Days. It's actually pretty cool. I don't well, know I'm going to tell you, this is what's oh, so crazy okay. about it. So there's this dude who he died and he wanted to be like cryogenically frozen or something like that. So his son, or no, his grandson brought him to the U.S., uh, had him frozen at some cryogenic place in California. And then like brought Walt his Disney, like Walt kinda, head is still frozen, I think. And then brought his body to Colorado, and it's like he and his mother, who this is her dad's body, um, they were planning on starting their own cryogenics center or something like that. And they basically ended up. She had a house that was being built, and she had her dad frozen in a shed out back. Um, and they kind of got not in trouble at all. Yeah, it was this whole thing. It was this whole big deal where they had to actually pass a law specifically because of this about like it being illegal to store body like illegally storing a body whatever but his body was grandfathered in so it's still being stored um, not in the shed anymore but it's like it was this whole thing and they basically created a whole festival around frozen dead around guy dead but it's like frozen dead guy days they have the coffin races so he's still frozen in colorado and somewhere uh, on their property they made no i think they have like an a, a official facility now but he is there and it's just ridiculous i love that is that actually a picture of him is that what he looks like i wonder um i don't or does know that just look like a that's just an old dude i hope it's really him plus years old i hope it's really him but i just love that they created a whole festival around it and this is that's um, super weird and fun <laughs> the vintage and y2k it's definitely way more portland than colorado although yeah colorado's got some weird stuff happening too. I, and i would totally be keeping this too if it was black I, I just can't do white it makes me look too washed out so all right okay weird <laughs> um, okay, so this is vintage. It's probably early 80s. It's just a very basic pullover, um, almost like a windbreaker, but it's cotton. It's hooded. It has these kind of funky, thick yarn, ropey, um, I don't know, ties at the neck. And it has a little stripe on the sleeve. It's nothing super fantastic. It's almost like, oh, sorry, stripe on only one sleeve. It's nothing super fantastic. It was, it's just vintage and it's cool. And I mean, it probably won't sell for a ton. It's gonna be again, all about how I describe it, but like 40 bucks maybe. All right, that's cool. I couldn't let it go in the landfill. They were about to donate all this stuff. All right, this one, um, you'll actually see this in, in Rally Roots video as well. He even brought in a movie clip, which I thought was, oh, look at you fancy with your editing skills. But uh, for those of you who are Christmas movie fans and in particular, why don't you go ahead and comment down below what is one or two, or three, five, what are your favorite Christmas movies to watch during the holidays? Um, this is on a Hanes tag. This is probably uh, late 90s, early Y2K. Um, it's a nice big size. And uh, it says, I don't know, Margo. And what movie is that from? National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That is true, that is true. I don't know, Why Margo. Why is the floor wet? <laughs> Anyway, uh, so of course I had I to grab it. Why is the carpet wet? Why is the 
as the carpet wet? I don't remember Why exactly. But you know what? Wet? Go watch Rally Roots because he plays the exact clip that it's from. But I was very excited to find this. I'm hoping I can sell it for at least 40, 50 bucks. Um, I already have it listed, but uh, of course I had to grab this. It's a great Christmas movie. Not necessarily my favorite. My favorite's probably, I mean, of course, White Christmas, which you last year claimed you'd never seen. And then this year you said you have seen it. I think you're full of lies either way. White Christmas. I mean, I, I think it, it's incredible, an incredible life. You've, you've, uh, it's a wonderful life. Yeah. You described that one. That one no. I've seen. White Christmas is the one I'm talking about. That is hands down always going to be the greatest Christmas movie of all time. But personal favorites, uh, probably Gremlins would probably be my favorite Christmas movie. Yep. Long Kiss Goodnight I do love. Um, there's a lot of them. But anyway, tell us down below your favorite Christmas movies. All right, so this is, uh, basically it's a vintage 90s shirt, but it's 90s does 70s, right? So oh. this is, it's polyester. It has a big dagger collar, right? It's got that big pointy collar and it's a short sleeve polyester, but it's got kind of a Western look to it. Like, so it's got the two pockets. It's got a weird texture to it's it got, too. It's polyester, it's double knit polyester. However, the tag says Kickwear Industry is 91. And then if you look at it, it definitely, between this combination of tag and the paper tag, it's definitely 80s or 90s. So I can't imagine that it would say Kickwear 91 if it was not a 90s tag, you know what I mean? So I think it's like 90s does 70s, that happens frequently. Yeah. Um, but it's just a basic white retro shirt. It's definitely like a men's extra large, maybe even bigger. Um, and I think it's cool. So I'll probably sell that in the $50 range as well. All right, all right. Okay, next up, I got a twofer. I got a twofer, you guys. Um, of course, being in Colorado, you're gonna find stuff that's winter sports related. Uh, and so these are a couple of the items that I got. This is uh, on the Haynes heavyweight tag, and it actually does have a date on it, 2001. This tag you'll see in the late 90s, early 2000s. And so this is 2001. It's got the little snowboarder dude on the front. And then the back, it says Wyoming Alliance Fellowship Winter Retreat. So this is like uh, some church or something like that. But super cool graphic. Um, I really like it. I'm hoping to be able to sell this for like $40. And then the really cool shirt I found, uh, this is, or this is one I got from Alex. Uh, this is on the Hanes um, tag. And this is actually from 1982. And this is one of those things we were at, um, Alex's and I was, putting aside like this big stack of t-shirts that I wanted. And then it wasn't until I got back to the house that I was like, oh, it has a back as well, which is always exciting. So this is World Champions. Um, this is the Mar Brothers. Uh, they were brothers that would uh, do the, I guess, I don't know what it's called, like doubles, is it called doubles? I have no idea. The only doubles I know of in skiing is the Powder 8 from Aspen Extreme. Tom, uh, Top Gun on the Slopes, greatest movie of all time. <laughs> Anyway, and then the back, it just has the, the K2 uh, on it, but it, it is kind of, it's got some discoloration, but I love it. And I'm hoping to sell this one for like 65, 70. It's one of those weird ones. You always have weird ones. Okay, so this was pretty cool. This one actually, this one came again from everything's from Robin and Joe. This is just a vintage, look at this pattern. That's awesome. Maxi skirt, it's in bark cloth, which I, I love. Cool. It's great bark cloth. It's just a full, this is very 60s slash 70s. Uh, maxi skirt and bark cloth, great fabric. I would even say this is a larger size. It's not handmade, it's fully lined, but there's no tag, that's not uncommon. Um, big metal zipper up the back. I would say this could be a modern large, which is nice. I haven't mm -hmm. measured it yet, um, but it's in great shape. And I will probably list this, like my favorite price point is 129.95 mm -hmm. and I would take anything over 75 for it. All right. Okay. And just okay. so you guys know, when we talk about prices, obviously you see our show where we show that our solds as well. If there's ever anything that we're talking about or listing or, or trying to sell and you're interested in it personally, please reach out to us personally. We will sell it to you much cheaper than it would be on the platform and sell direct. And there's Absolutely. no problem with that. We've done that several times. Yeah. And those are also like our first listed prices. Obviously we take offers and then over time we tend to go even cheaper, but exactly. All right. This one's a four fur, not a two fur, but a four fur. Four -fur. Some of these I'll go through not quickly. I we going to have four furs. I probably would have brought more downstairs. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you do your like stacks of blankets and stuff like that. Uh, so I got a lot of like Christian Jesus tees. Um, this one just like, you know, Jesus Christ, like the like Superman tee, nothing crazy. Hopefully I get like 40 bucks for that. Uh, this is a long sleeve 90s t-shirt and this is from Arc Thrift. Go forth, make disciples. 
And then the back has the whole uh, verse, the verses about going and, and making disciples. Um, this one I'm, I would hope to get like 50 bucks for. Uh, this is one, Ooh, this is one that, that Ryan one. threw my way. Um, I think Ryan threw it my way. Yeah, he was so. my favorite Pope. He was your favorite Pope? Yeah. Uh, this is on the Juanita tag. Although the new Pope I like too. And this is Pope John Paul II. This is from what they call it, something days. I can't remember what it was called exactly. Denver, Colorado. It was like world something day. I know about it a lot because uh, I grew up in a Catholic town, even though I did not grow up Catholic. And so a lot of my friends went on this trip to go see the Pope in 1993. And I never forget it because my best friend, Kinsey Reynolds, held hands with uh, John Cates on the bus and it was very scandalous. So I just reminded her of her, reminded her of that the other day and she was laughing. So, uh, but hopefully I can get 50 to 75 for that. And oh, last one is this awesome 80s. This is oh, 1989. Yep, this is uh, Go Against the Flow. It says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Um, oh, it has the Jesus fish on it. That's fine. And see, it's got the fish. I've actually had this shirt before. I've sold it on Etsy for $90. It's one of my favorite. This is a Living Epistles t-shirt. So, I mean, always I say I always grab the Jesus stuff, but I love the Living Epistles. It's probably my favorite. Um, they do some really cool graphic tees. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so this I haven't really done any research on, but it is definitely, it's like this um, canvassy kind of gauze. It's made out of a potato sack, basically. It's made out of a flour sack mm -hmm. of some kind. Oh, rice, rice sack. So it's a shirt. It's not handmade because there is a paper tag on it, but it was probably like a souvenir shirt. I don't think it's ever been worn, but it does nice. have some, uh, it's off-white, but it does have some uh, like staining on it, flex that looked like it could have been like rust or whatever, depending on where it was. I have washed it. That did not come clean. I'm not going to bleach it. This is not one that I would bleach, but it's kind of cool, right? It looks like, first of all, it's shaped like scrubs. Like that's... It's got like the V-neck and the very boxy shape of like a scrubs top and a slit on the side. But then it's from Hawaii and it's a rice. I don't even know what the hell it is. Honestly, I haven't done any research on it yet. I just think it's cool. It's clearly vintage. I don't know what I'm gonna list it for. Maybe it'll be like $500, but more than likely it'll probably be like 50, 60 bucks. All right, real quick, I need to amend my statement. Uh, Kinsey held hands with Brandon Cates. John is his dad. She did not hold hands with John. That would be even more scandalous. Um, but that was the scandal of the time. And next up, we've got a twofer, or should I say it's a moofer. Oh, dear God. That's bad. That's real bad. <laughs> if you like cows, guys, uh, this is amazing. Oh, my God, this one's hilarious. Universal Semen Sales. Now, what's awesome about this is that this is a real company that is currently still in business. This shirt is probably is like a Y2K. It's on this uh, Porton company. Um, it's like Y2K. Universal Semen Sales. So this is how you impregnate your cows. You the, uh, the, you order semen from the, the, um, the sleeve has a sleeve hit that says Sammy Semen. Oh my and then the oh my back, God. the back is the best part, though, guys. The back says... We stand behind every cow we service. Oh my God. There you go. That's so bad. It's so bad. I love it. Look, I mean, there's some, you know, there's some happy cows right there. Um, <laughs> anyway, I love it. I think it's hilarious. Uh, I think I have this up for, uh, hopefully I would sell it. I think I put it up for like $69.99. Hopefully sell it for 50. Of course you put it up for $69.99. Hey, oh, hey, oh, me. All right, next cow shirt. Now this one, because I had bought some really fun cow t-shirts from Alex last year. So I was like, come on, dude, where are the cow shirts? And he's like, oh, I have one that you definitely need to have. It's somewhere in that, those stacks over there. So I was like going through, going through. And sure enough, I found it. And he's correct. I freaking love it even more than Sammy Seaman. Uh, this is a Kentucky motorcycle. A Kawasaki. <laughs> Cow jokes. Cow socks. He's looking at the cow. He's wearing. He's got socks on. Uh, you like that one? <laughs> this is on the fruit of a loom Why tag. Why did you not have kids? This is such a missed opportunity. Uh, I know. You would have been like the king, a queen of dad jokes. That's like, right. I don't know. This is uh, like late '90s, early Y2K, but fantastic T-shirt. I love it. Bam. What you got? Ay, ay, ay. All right. So Follow that. I mean, I can't really. <laughs> so this is a pretty cool two-piece set. It's a two-piece suit. 
super tiny. Like this waist is like maybe a 22 inch waist, so extra small. Uh, but they are, it's polyester, double knit. It, they're not denim. They look like denim. It's like a printed denim on polyester bell bottoms. Um, they, it is not a handmade suit. It's just really like this. These are the pants. Extra small, but oh my God, so cute. And then the jacket. Matching jacket or blazer. Love it. Women's, women's extra small. Uh, it is hilarious. It reminds me very much of the Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake denim VMA award outfit dresses or whatever. They wore awesome. in the 90s, but this is 70s. I'm gonna list it pretty high, even though it's small. I'll probably list it in the $150 range to see how much interest I get because I've never seen anything exactly like it. And it's pretty fun. Hey, if those tiny bitches who get to have all the vintage get to have all the vintage, they're gonna pay for it, okay? That's true. Right? Okay, next up, I have a twofer. Now, I showed you some cool uh, tech tees last, last time and last week, and I got a lot more uh, really cool tech t-shirts. This one I love, the Sun Microsystems, but this is one's from the 80s. Um, it is on this Hanes 5050 tag. It is super soft. Feel that. It's so, oh. so soft. And uh, one of the great things about these tech t-shirts, a lot of times they will be for a product launch, and that makes it a lot easier if they aren't dated to be able to nail down when exactly it came out. Uh, but this is just a really cool old 80s vintage tech t-shirt. And uh, I think I probably listed this for like 100, so the hope would be I'd be able to get 70 to 100 for it. We'll just see how it goes. And then, oh, if you I remember, like I had another, um, I had, it was like a running t-shirt, but it had like on the shoe, it said HP, and it was from 1978. Um, so I got this at the same time. It has the same tag, so I'm gonna assume it's from around um, usually when I see this tag, I think like early 80s, but that other t-shirt was from 78. So I'm guessing it's probably from the late 70s as well. Um, this is awesome. It's got these owls on it and it says something to hoot <laughs> about. And it's got the HP on there. It's just an awesome shirt. That's super old tech stuff. It's <clears throat> awesome. It actually was purple and it still is a very, very light purple. Um, it had it some gray actually now. Yeah, it had some marks on it. I did bleach this uh, and you know, it doesn't look bleached, but it does, it's like this very, very, very light, barely pink or barely purple kind of grayish color, um, but it's awesome. But it's awesome. all over, it's a consistent color. Yeah, but I, that's because I have my pioneer woman technique in the, you know, I'm in the tub with my stick, mm -hmm. stirred Stirring. it up. Indeed. Um, I listed this for like a hundred bucks as well. All right, so this is also, this is probably vintage 70s or so. It does have a little bit of soiling, but it's 100% wool and I'm not gonna try to treat it. Uh, I have not had the best luck. I know you can wash in wool light. I know you can just soak it in cool water and whatever, but honestly, I, it has an acetate lining as well. So this is something I'm gonna have the owner, new owner just take it to a dry cleaner. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's a full zip lined sweater jacket. Ooh. It has, uh, this is men's, and it has two side pockets, but it's also like ribbed at the bottom, and it has the collar. I mean, it's in really, really nice shape, but the collar is definitely a little yellowed. I'm pretty sure they never washed it, you know what I mean? Very nice. Uh, dry cleaning wasn't exactly a thing in the 70s as frequent, so it's in great shape. I'm going to list it again in the like probably $150, $150 range or so. I would take anything over like $85 or $100. Nice. Okay, so when we were at the very first ARC that we went to, I was looking at the sweaters and I was noticing like all the sweaters were priced like $12.99. Um, and you know, if you find a really good one, it can be worth that much. But I was just kind of thinking like, man, these sweaters are a little high. And then just randomly, they had this one priced at $5.99. And I'm like, uh, this is like the best one of all the ones that are out there. This is a vintage cardigan grandpa sweater. Um, golden tea by campus. I would guess this is probably like 50s, 60s. What would you say? Yeah, 60s. Does it have 60s. the, wait, does it have the care tag on it? It's, yes, it does. Then 70s. 70s, sorry, 70s. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, this is uh, definitely, my grandpa was all about the cardigan, so I especially think of grandpa cardigan, grandpa sweater when I see one. But it's this nice red, it's in pretty good condition. It's got like one hole on the cuff. Um, but whatever, it's this really nice, vibrant red. And I got it for $5.99. I think I did list this in the 70s, I'll have to check. But um, anyway, super awesome. Made from 50% uh, pure alpaca, 50% wool. So uh, $5.99, I paid for that. I think I probably listed it for like 100 
That's pretty awesome. So this one has no brand on it, but it does have a tag on the inside. 100% uh, camel hair. Nice. Um, and you can, camel hair is kind of like cashmere. When you find a camel hair or cashmere sport coat or jacket, you want, you want to get it. It doesn't matter the brand. But the style of this leads me to believe it's probably 60s, 70s. It could be as late as 80s, but because there's no brand, it's going to be one of those really hard things to tell. It is a classic camel hair overcoat. Nice. It's in beautiful, so beautiful condition. It's soft. It's classic. It's men's. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it. There's Luxurious. no soiling. There are no moth holes. It's in great, great shape. Um, I will, and it's beautifully lined. So, I mean, I'll probably list this also for the $150, $175 range, and it should sell. This is the time of year where those cashmere coats are going to sell, overcoats. People want them. They want to gift them. And uh, if you go to try to buy one in a store now, you're not going to get one for like less than $500. So they're willing to pay up for the nicer vintage ones. It's not something someone wears every single day. This is like that classic style that'll hang in your closet and you'll wear it once or twice a year, but you'll have it forever, you know? Yeah, absolutely. All right, next up, I have a three fur. Got a three fur for you. Uh, this I didn't get in Colorado, but the opportunity arose in Colorado. We were uh, there again with Rally Roots, and Ryan told me he had some motocross t-shirts for me. He had like a bunch of motocross t-shirts he'd gotten from the 80s and 90s, um, and he tried to sell a few of them on their whatnot, and they were going for like 10 bucks a piece, and he's like, that's stupid. I know Katie can sell them for a lot more, so he said, I'm just going to send them to you, just give them to you. So I paid nothing for these guys, um, so I'm super grateful to uh, Ryan for hooking me up. And so That's where it's nice to have friends. <laughs> very, very true. He's like, I know you can make a lot more money with these. Um, and so this one is from 1998. It is on this Fruit of a Loom tag. I know you, I showed you that one earlier. It was from the 2000s. So late 90s, early Y2K. Um, it's got a little tiny uh, front hit, but the back is a 1998 12th annual LBL 200 AMA Suzuki National Dual Sport Trail Ride. And this one's really fun. It's got like the different animals on the dirt bikes on there. Uh, this is from Kentucky. Uh, it's got, yeah, it's got a, a, a bison, deer. A a deer, and, and an eagle. eagle. Yep, and an eagle. So this one's really fun. I think I priced this one at like $69.99. Um, hope to get 50, anywhere from 50 to 70 for this. Uh, just a really fun shirt. Next up, I've got this. This is from 1992. It's got a little front hit. It's got that awesome neon color going on. This is another dual sport. Does it grow it? No, it does not. Oh. It says Baby Bird Dual Sport National Trail Ride 1992. Just a really cool graphic there on the back. I might have listed this one for 100 hoping to get 65 anywhere from 65 to $100 for it. And then I actually got two of the same shirt. Uh, this is from um, 19, this is from the 80s. And it's got this kind of funky tag that I've never seen before. It just says made in the USA. It's 50-50 blend. Um, it feels very, like, feel that. It's, got, it's like kind of a thicker but very soft material. Um, and it's ATK. And then the back, you're going to love this, made in America. You've got your lovely lady model there. Um, and this is a, a motorcycle type. I don't even think that they make these anymore. Um, but I got two of these, and these I did list for 100 Again, hoping to get 65 to $100 each for these, um, but super fun. Okay. Thanks to Ryan. So this is actually not a set, but it does look like a set. So this is Oscar de la Renta. It is the pink label, which is goes through to like mid-2000s. So it started in the 90s to mid-2000s. I will probably call this vintage and have it be like you know, late 90s Y2K vintage, which doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot, but it is a baby blue, uh, baby blue, baby pink satin robe. Uh, it's in great shape. There's no issues with it. It has some lace detailing. It is a long, full length robe. It is um, a size large. And then the piece that was with it, it's a different color pink. So it's, it, even though it's a similar label and it's also a size large, can be worn together, but it, I'm not gonna list them together because they are separate colors. Uh, also Oscar de la Renta. This is just a long uh, satin nightgown. And um, the robe I'll probably list in the 50 to $60 range and then this will be like 30 or 40. Hmm. Uh, combined, I probably would still would have only listed it around 75 or 80. So it's actually better that they're separate because I think I may get more money that way. There you go, there you go. All right, my last thing I'm going to show, I actually didn't get, get in Colorado at all. I actually sourced this off of eBay. I was doing some research on a Woolrich jacket 
that I had to list. I was just kind of looking and seeing what, what people were getting for it these days. And I found this listing. They had it listed for $50. I went ahead and like watched it and then I got an offer for $40. Um, and paying $10 for shipping. So it was a total of $50. And I think I had mentioned it to Vicki and she's like, why don't you buy that? And so I'm like, you know what? That's true. It's definitely worth buying for 50 bucks. Um, so this is a like 60s, 70s, um, wool rich kind of shack it almost. It says 70s with that collar. Yeah, but this tag is like 60s, 70s. Right, I know. Um, but saying, yes, with the 70s. 70s with that kind of but first of all, I want to point out, you got your Christmas colors going on. So you got green and red, which looks fantastic. And then what I love about this is it's actually got the pockets. Um, you see the little slanted pockets there. Um, it's just in really nice condition. It's like a car coat. That's what I'm saying. Really it's kind of yeah. like a car coat, kind of a jacket. It's not like lined or anything. Um, but it's just a really, really fantastic jacket. I paid 50 for it. And honestly, I listed it for 200. I would take 150 for it but I would not take any less than 150. Um, this is probably something that's more likely to sell on Etsy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, when I saw it, I was like, there's gotta be something wrong with it. And they're just not disclosing all the flaws or something. Cause I'm like, that's a really nice jacket. I can't believe they're selling it for so cheap. Um, but I should be able to make some money on it and hopefully sell it uh, over the holidays. It's a good holiday piece. Okay, this is my last piece. And this is what prompted me to uh, purchase all these things. So first of all, uh, Joe and Robin were selling these items on Whatnot to start with, and um, there was like no traction on Whatnot. I had bought a few of the things on Whatnot, and then the rest I just bought separately. So one of the things I purchased was this. I paid uh, $10 for this coat, um, but when she went to go ship it to me, Whatnot was charging like $58 shipping, which was stupid. It didn't it didn't cost that. So we just canceled the order and I bought it off what, you know, is offline. That a Sorry. Jacket? It is not a labradoodle. So here's the thing. This is a vintage, this is probably 60s, may even be late late 50s. This is Mongolian curly lamb. You can't hear you, but yeah. It's Mongolian curly lamb is what it's called. So it's fur, it's real fur. It's curly lamb. It's very popular. It's um, usually you'll find it in white, sometimes in black, but not often. Um, it's this is a three-quarter length coat. It's a really big size and it's this grayish You know almost a yellowy gray with it vintage Jordan Marsh from Boston um, But it does have issues the lining this jacket is very heavy it probably weighs about eight to ten pounds So the lining is torn someone probably at some point had it on a hanger and it tore from the weight Are you gonna repair it? Um, I don't think I'm gonna repair it. I think I'm gonna sell it as is and that's all that's really wrong with it is the lining is torn at the at the neck. Uh, it can be re-sewn, but there's no other holes. It actually has a belted tie inside. It's in great, great condition. Um, I want to get it listed, so I don't want to wait to have it repaired. So I will probably sell it just as is. And I think I can get somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 for this. That's what I'm going to list it at anyway. Um, and... You know, we'll see what happens. This is something that definitely will be very popular on Etsy. Indeed. All right, guys, that is everything uh, for today's haul. Again, go check out the Rally Roots video to see more of our Colorado trip. Uh, it's a lot of fun. There's some fun moments. And um, yeah, we'll be back next week with some more haul stuff and we'll definitely be um, here for our Sunday show on Sunday. So make sure you come and watch us there. We're gonna be going over our numbers for the last week and talking about how things have been going with how we've kind of completely changed um, how we're approaching our separate businesses. But we've both been making some changes and we wanted to talk to you guys about that and see how things are going with you. All right, we'll see you Sunday. Bye. Bye.